Well, good morning, guys. Today's topic on politically opinionated. Some would like to call them protesters. Others would like to call them terrorists. Well, I'm leaning towards terrorists because what's happening? They are blocking routes to get into hospitals, getting into essential services like nursing homes. Let's break this down. What's really happening here? We have a president that is unhinged, talking about liberating states that have strict lockdown procedures, strict we're going to not lock down. We're going to call them shelter in place, shelter in home. And there's a reason. We are flattening the curve so that we, we can look towards opening back up and trying to begin this process of allowing our country to turn back into something that is a new normal. We're not going to be back to where we're, you know, crowding the malls all at once. That's just not going to happen. If you think that's what's going to happen, I'm sorry. It's just not. These so-called, you know, liberty movement terrorists, I've got another thing coming for you. But let's kind of back up here for a little bit here. These states, let's talk about Michigan. Michigan is where it kind of started because it's the epicenter of where this began. And then it broke out from there to Washington and, um, a couple of other states. But why I chose Michigan and why it's important is because of what the president has been doing specifically to their governor, Gretchen Whitmore. Since this began, she has been very outspoken and very poignant in how she has been handling this. She has been very outspoken in what she has been needing. She has been very willing to work with the president and point out the things that he has done right, but point out the things that he has done wrong. But see, our president has been very petty to the point that he doesn't like what he's pointed out been doing wrong. And frankly, Trump has been doing 99% of the stuff wrong. He has lied consistently on everything. You know, I did a video, I think it was yesterday or the day before, and we covered extensively what he has been doing. And it's very disappointing and it's sad that you know, we have a timeline, a actual timeline that we can look at and how this broke out and how everything was documented and where he ignored, he ignored intelligence. And we saw what was going on. It was our governors 
our mayors who were taking the lead when our president wasn't. So it was right for them to be very active and vocal. So, you know, anything that they have said or asked for or demanded from our government is very, very um, warranted. But here's the thing about Michigan. Michigan is a crucial state for Trump this fall. He needs that state for re-election. What he thought he would do at the beginning was treat Gretchen Whitmore as an anomaly of a governor. He didn't have to treat her with respect, with kindness, with a level of dignity, or with the level of respect that she deserved as the head of state and the head of government of Michigan. No, what he did was he would refer to her as that woman, that person. He would never name her as the governor of Michigan. He would never title her, say her name. It was always a sexist, demeaning term. So, there is that kind of backstory that builded that animosity that he has towards these Democratic leaders of these states. Just like with Governor Inslee of Washington. He was a nothing. Oh, he was a failed presidential candidate that didn't get anywhere in the primaries. We don't need to call him. He's a nothing. Don't worry about them. See, he has a pattern. Don't worry about Virginia. They don't need our help. Solidly Democratic states. Don't worry about Kentucky. They don't need our help. Puerto Rico? Who's that? They're not even, they're, we don't even know. They're, they're, they're not even part of us. We've given them all this money to help and they're just corrupt and we don't need to help them anymore. See, there's a pattern of a backstory that we can use to bring forward to today. And some of those words that I said have been used in the past several weeks. So now we come to what's going on now. We have a president that is tweeting, liberate, liberate these states. You know, I would beg to say, and, and this is just me using some sense from when I was going to school and getting my degrees in political science, that there's some constitutional questions of what he is saying. No, I don't have my PhDs in constitutional um, law. 
And there are some constitutional scholars that I really wish they would take a look at what he is tweeting, what he is urging. these people to do and his campaign surrogates are now pushing these people to do you know he recently just brought on Kelly Ann, Kaylee McAhaney as his press secretary former campaign surrogate mainly known from Fox News Bless her heart. She is just, you know, since she took on the role of press secretary for the United States, messaging for the president and the White House, it is nothing but blithering slant of what a campaign would say. So I look forward to more of what Donald Trump is saying as a campaign stance. So we now have campaign operations working directly under state control. But back to what is happening now. We have a White House that is directing civil unrest in these states. Civil unrest to overthrow governments in these states. We have an epidemic going on. We don't have these stay-at-home orders in place to take away civil liberties, your gun rights, your any of this. It is not going against your Second Amendment or anything. What it's doing is to protect you for a short term so we can get things under control to flatten this curve so that way we can get to a point that our hospitals are not collapsing. But what happens? You yahoos, oh, bless your hearts. My God, oh my God. Man, one chick. Oh, I love this one. Holding up a sign says, my body, my choice. And she's in a hazmat suit and a mask. Kind of ironic because if it is your body and your choice, and you're a Trump supporter holding your little Trump flag in your sign. You know, when you're dictating towards a woman that wants to have, say, an abortion and you're not, and you're saying, oh no, she doesn't get a choice because I'm going to tell her that she doesn't have a right to an abortion because I don't want her to. But you're over here saying it's your body and your choice. Honey. No. We're not going to play this game of, I have my rights over here, but I'm going to take your rights over here. No, that's not how it works. You don't get 
to sit on this fence and dictate, I want to do what I want over here, but I'm going to tell you over here what you can and can't do. No. You're not going to play this overthrow terrorist of the government because you don't like that we're trying to actually do something for the good of the whole of the people. See, that's the point. Doing the good of the whole people. See, this virus is killing a whole lot of people. It's affecting everybody. Everybody. What this one person over here is doing, affecting one person. So when you try to bring this one person's thing in over here, because a lot of you have been trying to, because you put in things in and, oh, you need to make sure that abortions aren't included in anything over here. Because what this one person's doing over here doesn't affect everybody. So when you hold your little sign up here that says, my body, my choice, girl, fuck you. I'm just going to say it. For a collective amount of women and my friends, fuck you. That's just a whole collective fuck you when you hold up a sign and you're in a hazmat suit and an N95 mask that really probably needs to be at the front line because you probably don't need it. It's just going to be a collective fuck you to you. And then, to the rest of you all, who are blocking the entrances to hospitals, to nursing homes, to vital services? What the fuck do you think you're doing? Honestly. Do you think you are making the situation any better? Do you think it's smart to be blocking entrances for hospitals where ambulances are needing to get in, that doctors are needing to get in, that nurses are needing to get in, that CNAs are needing to get in, that techs are needing to get in, and that nurses and doctors are needing to leave because they are so exhausted? and they just want to get home and sleep before their next 12 to 14 hour shift because they are exhausted and mentally exhausted because of what they have seen and what they have been through and who they have saw died because they couldn't save the life of the person who died of COVID-19. Do you think that your little brain that is being lied to by the president in his campaign that's telling you your civil liberties are being stolen, not to mention in Michigan, Those of you that are paid actors by Betsy DeVos's foundation. By the way, fuck you, Betsy DeVos. You slimy, worthless human being. You are an Awful, awful human being. I 
don't even know how you call yourself a Christian, and I don't even know how you sleep at night. I hope the voices of the dead in Michigan come and visit you nightly. How dare you? Because you're paying people to come and protest in your state. So back to you, you paid actors, you bust in protesters, you small minority of Michiganders protesting these stricter stay-at-home rules that are there to help flatten the curve for the third largest state that is being affected by this virus that is now going to have one of the largest spikes next to Florida, which I will get to next, because that governor, dear God, is as smart as a dick weasel being hunted by Sarah Palin that's blindfolded by Betsy DeVos as he's putting on his N95 mask upside down. Because we all saw that video. So Michiganders, paid actors, bust in protesters. And those of you that drove in. You guys, as well as, let me add in, the ones that are walking and protesting in the open, not following the simple social distancing and those that you are crowding in. All I can say is COVID-19 is going to do its job. The next job that's going to happen is natural selection. Most of you probably won't get that last reference because quite frankly, I don't know if you guys have any type of a brain. Because if you did, you would understand that you are being used as political pawns. Because what's happening in Michigan is a governor trying to save the people of her state. She is not doing anything but doing the job of a governor, which is not easy. It's not simple. But she is doing what is right. So go home. Stop being a terrorist. And I use terrorist. You know why? I've lived through a terrorist moment, a domestic one, and that's what you guys are doing. I'm from Oklahoma. I just celebrated and mourned and memorized 25 years of the Moore bombing because I remember that day. I was supposed to be at an appointment at the Social Security office that day. I lived where others didn't. You guys are causing people to die. 
think about it. You guys are causing people to die. So, while I remember what happened 25 years ago by a sick and deranged domestic terrorist who came to my city and bombed a federal building, what you guys are doing may not be bombing. But what you guys are doing is clogging and blocking vital services and causing more people to die. Because you guys are not looking at what is the greater good and what this governor is doing to save lives. I don't know if you will ever understand or ever believe that Donald Trump has used you, has lied to you, manipulated you. You guys went full in on this Trump train. My dad did too. My mom did. I tried to warn him. I told them he was lying. I proved to them he was lying. I told them Hillary was telling the truth. Hillary pointed out every single thing he would do that he would use you guys. He would use you as pawns. He would use you and abuse you and lie to you. Well, folks, you bought it hook, line, and sinker. I wish I there was a button that I could push and show you automatically what he is doing to you. And you would see and be like, oh my God. What have we done? And I can't. I have friends that are suffering deeply. Financially. That are on the verge of losing everything or have lost everything. But yet they still support this president because they believe he is going to miraculously save them. And I've told him he's not. I've proved to them that he's not but they just keep buying the crap that he's selling them. And people, that's what you are doing when you are listening to and watching his tweets when he baits you with things like liberate these states. People, these states are free. People, you're not losing your rights. You're not losing anything. The only thing you're going to lose is your life. 
your life if you don't stay home. In Oklahoma, we have a governor that hasn't really cared. We have a so-called shelter at home, stay at home order, but it's really not geared to make everybody stay at home. And the only reason why he did that is because the mayors of our two largest cities and their surrounding suburbs, well, most, issued strict shelter-in-place orders and forced his hand to close the schools for the remainder of the year, and make him make this somewhat of an order, but our cities did stronger. You know why the cities went stronger? Because they knew the governor was not listening. Just like our governor wants to reopen everything, but our mayors here in Oklahoma City and in Tulsa know quite differently that we're not quite ready to open up. Our mayor in Oklahoma City has done some extraordinary things with our city council. We've created some, we've created over a $5 million fund for our small businesses to help on top of what the federal government has done. We've created a task force that will work with our small businesses for reopening. We have done a whole lot. <clears throat> but we also know we're not ready. Our mayors know that it's vitally important that we continue a strict stay at home order so that way we can flatten the curve. Our mayors know that we have a continued community spread because people have not been following the orders. Because there are people who are listening to the president. And yes, we are going to have protesters here in Oklahoma City protesting our mayor. Our mayor. See, our city council is a nonpartisan driven election, including our mayor. Yes, I know our mayor is actually a Republican. Our mayor is an amazing mayor. Mayor David Holt is an amazing mayor and I admire him for everything he has done. And if and when he runs for governor, I have, and by the way, because a lot of you are gonna be like, well, I thought you were a Democrat, Mike. I thought you were, you were just, you're railing against all this Republican stuff. You're just one of those liberal Democrats. Actually, I vote for the person, not the party. I vote for both. Because what matters is the platform, what they're doing, how they perform, And what, what are they doing for me and my family? So,
David Holt, our mayor, has done what Gretchen Whitmore in Michigan has done. See, our governor here in Oklahoma hasn't done nearly anything. He's just put these lax little things in here because what he said was, you, if you're over 65, stay at home. Or if you have a compromised immune system, stay at home. Really? Gretchen Whitmore, everybody stay at home because we've got to get a handle on this virus because we are about to really get bad and I don't want to have another death. I don't want to have a worsened outbreak because I care too much about our state. See, what you guys that call yourself protesters, protesting for these civil liberties, protesting that I want to be able to go buy some fertilizer or I need to go buy some hair dye because I saw you, lady, in the car saying you need to go buy some hair dye. Those roots that you were showing, I'm sorry, but you haven't done those in probably six months. Those weren't 30 days. I'm just going to say, bitch, please. So, stop with this incessant idea that you have to go and protest and really are now going to cause this massive spike in even more cases of COVID-19 and now inundate the hospital system and most likely cause a further collapse because you decided to be a coronavirus terrorist at the Capitol, all because Donald Trump told you in a tweet to liberate. And Betsy DeVos paid you. Kind of sad. Can't think for yourself. All you are is a paid actor. A paid actor for a reality star that happens to be the president of our country that has denied a virus, called it a hoax, that we now have almost three quarters of a million cases, almost 50,000 dead, with blood on his hands and you guys are going to cause more. I hope you're happy because you guys, you wonderful little liberating terrorist have no idea what you're really doing. Because you know what? All of you, at the end of the day, will go away. You will have nothing left to do 
or say. Because either you're going to get sick and die, or you're going to get sick and you're not going to have a president after November to support because he lied and lost because the people won and saw the truth. They saw past the lies. They saw that he tried to incite domestic terrorism. They saw that a cabinet member paid people to try to create chaos, to try to clog the streets that caused people to die. No. Some of you will inevitably get sick and end up in those hospitals on those ventilators without your loved ones being able to get in there and see you. So just remember that. Because there are inevitably doctors and nurses and techs while you guys were blocking the roads, blocking those entrances that didn't get to get into those hospitals, that didn't get it to get into those rooms to at least be there with that patient. And they had to die alone. I hope you're happy. Just know, like Donald Trump, you protesters have blood on your hands.